Guitar and Excel, C major, A minor, seven note scale, fret zero, otherwise known as open position, and fret 12 intervals. Get ready and some coffee. Get ready. Ready? And fret not, my frustrated folksy friends. Get her! No, really, fret not. Don't fret, old chum. Yeah, li lift your fingers up from the guitar. Yeah, you know, we're practicing open positions here. The cowboy chords. Let's figure this out. Honestly, like, like I think we need to incorporate some negative stimuli here. It's too much for my eyes! Helping you to remember to fret not when I tell you to fret not. Now, don't you fret, Rainbow. Okay, so like here, here's the plan. Like me, I'm fretting. Fret. A, a, every time I say fret not, I want to fret. And you don't lift your fingers up from the guitar, you'll receive a terror-inducing shock from the guitar strings. I got it. This is all your. Carefully calibrated not to be too large though, so as not to like set the guitar on fire or anything. Fire! But you know that'll teach you to fret not. When I tell you to, fret not. So stop your fretting, Master Dwarf. Yes, Phil. I mean, it, it is okay to tremble, Phil, as long as you fret not. Sakura, are you all right? Okay, Phil, as long as you fret not. No need to fret. I only got wet. Anyways, it's just an idea. You know, to, to talk about negative stimuli, you know, some jerk actually stole my glasses. Hey, that's the guy. The guy that stole my glasses. It's time I got him! Honestly, if I don't have my glasses, I may need like a bigger monitor or something. You need a bigger monitor? It's messed up, man. I'm a visual person, you know? The, your response was the least funny. I'm a visual comedian. I mean, how's an old man supposed to get any work done without his porn glasses? Did you get the JPEG? Wouldn't open. Ow! Oh. I mean, re reading glasses. Uh, I mean... Y you, you know what I meant, Phil? I meant... I know what you meant. <laughs> Reading glasses! Uh, yeah. Uh, let me start over. Edit, ed edit that part out, Phil. Dang it. Edit that part out. Yes, I will be able to tell if you don't cut that part out. Replacing the audio with subtitles, Phil. Cut that out, Art! Say why Because... Because even without my glasses, as long as the objects I'm looking at are large enough, I could still get by. I get by. Well, sometimes it takes a while for a man to find himself. Using my super squinting technique. But I shouldn't have to, dang it. Yes, but we shouldn't have to. Fine, just don't go touching the body. I shouldn't have to. It's the principle of the matter. It's the principle. Principle. Steal an old man's glasses. Honestly, you're lucky without my glasses, I can't make out where your face is. Or I'd smack it. Anyways. Let's just see if, without my glasses, I can find where I left my guitar. You got no reason to fret, Twy. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay. You could just follow along. But if you do have access, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. Quick recap of the project thus far, noting that you don't have to have watched all prior presentations to follow along with this one, but a general overview of the overall project can help to orientate us. So let's go back to the first tab to get that general overview. We've been looking at the C major scale and related modes. Started by looking at it in open position, which we define as frets 0 through 3. Remembering that this E represents the low or heavy string, the one closest to the ceiling on our fretboard. And the black positions or in zero position is the open positions, the ones that we don't fret. That's basically the nut. Funnest way to map out the notes in open position is typically to create the chords from the scale, starting with the one chord, in this case, the C major chord, map it out in open position, and then we discussed it in detail. We did the same for the four chord because it has a major chord construction as well, mapped it out, discussed it in detail. Same with the five chord. Back to the two chord, which has a minor chord construction, as does the three chord, the six chord, and then the seven chord, diminished chord construction. If we were to map out all the chords that we looked at and constructed in open position, all the notes would basically make up the C major scale and related modes, which we can see here in the blue notes 
in open position. We then wanted to jump up to the middle of the guitar, learning positions up here, not first by chord shapes, but rather by scale shapes, pentatonic, and then major scale shapes that we can then tie in and link to the open positions. And then once we looked at the shape, we concentrated on each of the notes and basically modes uh, within the shape for our C major scale and related modes. We then moved up to the next position on the guitar and did the same thing, pentatonic scale, major scale, then looked at all the different notes that we're focusing in on with that shape to see how we can link it up to the prior position and open position. Same thing with the next shape up that we took a look at, mapped out the pentatonic scale, the major scale, then discussed each of the notes uh, in the shape, basically kind of looking at different modes, although we'll look at more modes stuff more formally later. And then we moved up to this shape, and that starts on fret number 12. Fret number 12 is where the guitar board starts over again. So we have the nut here is repeating at fret number 12. So that means that as we look at this position, it's the same notes that are an octave up as we learned in open position. However, in open position, we didn't learn the formal scale shapes, pentatonic and major scale, but rather the open chords that basically make up all of the scale shapes. So now we're mapping out this position out here as the guitar starts over so we can learn the formal fingering if it wasn't in open position, meaning we have to put like our index finger down here and our pinky here. Whereas if it was in open position, we're also going to go back to open position, learn the formal scale shapes and how the fingering would be adjusted so we could still recognize the shape, but adjust our fingering because clearly I don't have to finger this with my pointer finger, but rather I would be fingering here out. So I have a lot more uh, reach uh, to finger things within open position. Now, a quick recap of the color coding system that we have been looking at here. And then we're going to basically look at more of the intervals this time. So if I look at this fretboard, we're going to be saying all the green notes are the ones that are going to be the pentatonic scale, only five out of the seven notes. And then all of the colored notes, the blue and green, are the major scale. So I typically think of it as the major scale is underneath. All of the colored notes have blue underneath. And then we put the, the five out of the seven notes on top of it uh, in green. Okay, and so then, so those are all the notes that are basically good uh, to play if we're playing in a C major scale or any of the related modes to it. And then these positions are going to give us basically our breakout of the guitar into the positions into the fretboard because typically with the guitar, we want to not just be able to play things across this way, but up and down in a vertical fashion. So we'd like to be able to find everything within each of these groups, or that's one way that we can look at the guitar, one way the guitar is structured to be built. So if I look at this one, we started at what I would call position one. You can also call it a G-shaped position, because if we look at the related C major uh, scale, we're always going back to the C major to name it. If you're gonna call it a G-shaped position, you can see that this G-shape, this is a G-shaped C major that basically fits within it which is why we might label that. Now remember that uniquely three note chord fits uniquely in the pentatonic scale, but does not fit uniquely in the full major scale, which is why it's useful to think of the pentatonic scale in some ways to kind of get a grip on where you are in the guitar and then build the other two notes if that's one way you want to think of it. We then went from this position one to position two, I would call it position two generically. You can also call it an E-shaped position because if I look at the related C major uh, chord, you can see if I was to make a C, it would go boom, uh, boom, 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 which is basically an E-shape if it were in open position. That's why you might call this an E-shaped C major chord and then use that to map out the pentatonic shape and then the full shape around it which you could also call shape number two basically and then i can move up to shape number three that we took a look at that's going to be this green shape 
and that one we could call a D shape because if you start on the C again, because we're looking at everything related to the C, because we're tying everything to the major, uh, it, it would have this uh, D shaped C major chord. And that's where that one is. And then we move up to the next one. This is where we are now, which I would call position number four. You can also call it a C shape. Because if I look at the C scale that we're looking in and we mapped out the C shape, it would look something like that. And so that is where we are uh, at this point in time. You can see that C shape here. And of course, back here, same shape. So the thing is repeating uh, at this point in time. Now we want to look at the intervals. I'm going to go to the next worksheet over and we're going to be thinking about the intervals. This is a this is a kind of exercise that I recommend doing like in the morning when your when your mind is most active to learn kind of like theory uh, type of stuff so that when you're kind of noodling around in the evening, this stuff will basically sink in as you're basically just noodling around uh, in the guitar or with the guitar. So we're trying to keep a lot of the numbering systems separate in our mind so that we can practice particular things and not have everything kind of blend together and become kind of a mess. None of the numbering systems are too complex in and of themselves, but we, it's easy to get them confused and that becomes a problem. So numbering systems we have to keep straight. One, we have to name all the notes on the fretboard, which we could use letters to do, but we can also do with numbers, and I'm arguing that there are pros and cons to do that because that helps us with some simple math to do the intervals. If we can code switch between the letters and the numbers, I would think that is a useful thing to do. We also have a numbering system to number the seven note scale out of the 12 note uh, musical alphabet. So these are relative positions now relative to the scale that we are in. We also have a numbering system that we could use so that we can see uppercase and lowercase, the uppercase indicating a major chord construction, the lowercase indicating that we can build a minor chord construction that would fit into our uh, scale. So we have that numbering system. And when we build these chords, then we also have another numbering system that's basically built on the, the relative position of the root note. So if I'm trying to build this chord off of the second of the C major, then I'm going to start here. And that means that I'm going to use that as my, cent as, my, as my center point to have the numbering system of the 1, 3, 5, for example, to build this one. So that's a, just a different relative numbering system. We also have basically the numbering system with regards to the intervals as we count through each position basically in the scale. So let's get a quick recap of that. If I go to my OG tab over here, we know that our, our musical alphabet, if I just list out the musical alphabet, I can put it this way. This is how it's mapped out on our worksheet. I'm going to say it's A, and then we have a sharp or a flat, A sharp or B flat, which I'm going to put the lowercase a, B, and then B, and then there's no sharp or flat C, C sharp, D flat, D, D sharp or E flat, E, and then there's no sharp or flat to go to the F, and then F sharp or G flat to the G, and then the G sharp or A flat to go to the A. Now, obviously, that's a little bit difficult for me to just say as a musical alphabet because of all the sharps and flats that mess up, mess that up. And it's very difficult to say it backwards with all the sharps and flats and so on. If we number it, then it can be easy for us to go forwards and backwards. So there's pros and cons to both systems, but if you can code switch between a numbering system and the lettering system, then that can help you do easy math. So that would mean the A would be the one, A sharp or B flat would be a two. So I'm not gonna say there's two names with my numbering system. I'm just gonna say that is the same tone it's a two that helps me count the intervals whether you call it a sharp or a flat right so then we've got the b is a three the c is a four the c sharp or d flat is a five the d is a six the d sharp or e flat is a seven e is an eight f is a nine f sharp or g flat is a 10 uh, g is an 11 g sharp or a flat is a 12 and a is going back to one now, obviously, it takes a little bit of time to be able to code switch easily between these two. That's one of the things we'll work on uh, with this exercise. But if you could do that, then it becomes a lot easier to say, okay, what if I had like a D? How far away is that from 
the A. I can't just count A, B, C, D, right, because I have the sharps and flats, but if I know a D is a 6 and an A is a 1, I could do some subtraction to basically uh, count that out. So that's the general idea. Now then, we also have to keep straight the intervals between the notes, which is the formula for a scale, the major scale being the starting point for most scales. So if I can say that this C is a four, four is a C, the formula is whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Uh, that's just the musical alphabet for a major scale. We're gonna accept that a priori, that's just, it is what it is. I'm not gonna get into the rationale of that. We're just gonna accept that that is the case. And if I apply that, then four plus two is six, code switching from, from the number to the letter, six is a D. Six plus two or a whole step is eight, code switching from a number to a letter, eight is an E. Eight plus one is nine, half step. Nine code switch is an F. Nine plus two is 11, 11 code switch is a G. 11 plus 2, 11, 12, and then it goes to 13. So you can say 13 minus 12 notes takes you to 1, or 12 to 1 makes you around the horn to 1. Code switching 1 is an A. 1 plus 2 or a whole step is 3. 3 code switching is a B. 3 plus 1 half step is 4. That takes us back to the C. Now, obviously, if you, take, if you do the same thing and you start on any other place other than the starting point you're basically playing a mode which is the same pattern but from a different starting point so the dorian would be whole step half step whole step whole step whole step uh half step whole step right and but it's the same pattern it's just that you're starting from a different point that's what all the modes are basically doing uh and we're going to focus most of our time on the c here so notice that these intervals are in between each step that we have to kind of understand, whole and half step. And then we can also have the interval from the starting point to any point that we're currently on. And that's where this worksheet comes into play. So down here, we have our, our intervals. We'll talk more about intervals in, a, in another section, but it's useful to just start to visualize what it what these intervals are meaning these are all relative positions the reason they're confusing is because they're relative to what we're to what we're talking about so so everything here is relative to this c that's our starting point so if i go through my positions the first position is the perfect first which is zero notes away this one is two notes away which we would call a major second that's what that capital this one the third is going to be four notes away which is a major third the fifth is five notes away which we call a perfect fit a perfect uh fourth and the fourth of course is the maybe not a course it's kind of confusing it's four it's the fourth note of the scale that we're looking at or a major scale right that's kind of the idea it's perfect sometimes you can kind of think of the perfect as being like those are usually the ones that are similar from major to minor but that doesn't work perfectly it's just whatever they named it perfect for whatever reason because they thought it sounded different or perfect but then then this one's going to be a seven note away perfect fifth and then the sixth one is a nine note away major six and then we have a uh the seventh is an 11 note away major seventh you can also see those mapped out here so if we're looking at the c that's a perfect first if we're if we're looking at uh this e here then that's a four note away major third. So remember, you can see here that from the prior note, it's two notes away or a whole step, which you could call a major second, you know, if you're using that terminology, but we usually say whole step when we're looking at in between, because it's only usually gonna be a whole step or a half step, uh, and then we, meaning two notes or one note, but if you compare it to, the, to its root of the scale, then that means it's a four note away. So right, one, two, three, four notes away. And it's a, uh, that means it's a major third. So right here's one, two, three, four notes away, major third. Now that leads to the, the other thing that just we want to keep in mind when we're trying to learn uh, the positions like up and down in a vertical position here, just to recap that if I was to look at this for example and we're going from c to c over here like on a piano 
then uh let me just copy this let's copy this well let's just take this one it would go from the c whole step to a d whole step to an e half step to an f whole step to a g whole step uh to an a whole step to a b half step back to the c now once we get that pattern we can see it like we would see it in a in a on a piano but what I want to see is it to fit in each of these patterns vertically because on a guitar, it makes more ergonomic sense to play it vertically. So that means that I have to be able to understand if I'm going to play the same shape, what it means when I go down to the next string. What does that even mean? Well, typically it's going to be, for example, if I, if I was to count up from this E, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. If I go five places out, I get to another A, which is the next string. So in other words, if I go to this G right here, then if I go one more whole step from that from that position here, instead of going here, I'm going to go down here. So in essence, if I was, had to play this with my index finger, which I wouldn't because it's in, it's in open position, but if it was over here, I'd have to play it with my index finger, right? And then I'm going to get to the... Uh, the outer point, which is a, I'm in the wrong position. Let's say we were saying it was here. The outer position is a, is a G. I would have to play that with my pinky and then going from pinky to pointer to the next string is a whole step, right? Instead of going here, whole step here, we're going whole step. So as I count through these positions, whenever I go from pinky to pointer, I could say basically, okay, that's a whole step from one from the one to another the only place that's not the case is when i go between these two because you can see this g one two three four four notes up gets to this b so there's a kink in the tuning right here so in this case if i go not from pinky but if i was playing this with my pointer and i was playing my my ring finger here going from ring finger to pointer is a whole step, right? I'm here, instead of going up to here, whole step, I'm moving back down. So as you count up these shapes, like in a formal type of way, to try to count the intervals, you need to be able to know, well, what's what's gonna happen when I go from this string down to this string from a stepwise standpoint, so that you can count out the intervals instead of being able to count them out as you would on a piano, which would be nice and laid out beautifully this way, right? Because Obviously, again, the guitar is ergonomically designed to play it kind of vertically. So that's going to be that's going to be the general idea. So we're going to go through this worksheet. I'm just going to play it out up here and we'll look at each position. As I do, I'm going to try to recite a little as much like uh, wonky terminology to get in my head as I can so that I can get my fingering in place so that I can start to memorize the names of the actual notes, be able to code switch between the name of the note and uh, the letter of the note and uh, be able to see whether you're going to have a major chord construction or a minor chord construction and be able to see what the interval is as we relate it to the home position. We're going to mainly do this on the majors, but you can do the same exercise for any of the modes because we would just switch it to basically look at the modes, which we'll do more when we get into modes in general. Okay. I'm going to start this process on fret number 12 and the lowest note within the shape that we're working in on, which is a C, walk through it and then repeat the same process over in open position, adjusting the fingering to deal with the nut in open position. You will recall we're in shape number four up top here, which you could call a C type of shape. And as I would recommend practicing every time you practice your scale shapes, we're going to start and stop on the root of uh, the note, so we're looking at that lowest C within the position. So I'm gonna say, this is gonna be, I'm gonna be playing through a C major scale. I'm actually gonna say this out loud. I would recommend saying this out loud if you can. I'm playing a C major scale starting on the first. When I say first, that means relative position. So that's different from me saying one, right? So if I say first to the second to the third, that means relative positions, which might mean something different than if I say one, two, or three, because that's an attempt to change kind of the terminology to make this as streamlined as possible. So I'm playing position number one of the C major scale. The first of the C major scale is note number four. That's the numbering of the note, 
which of course is a C, code switching from the number to the letter of a C. And then I'm gonna go from the first to the second. So I'm going from here, you can indicate it here, the first to the second. We also have it indicated here, the first to the second, which is a whole step, which is indicated by this two. And I also know it's a whole step because I can see I'm going from pinky to pointer. Pinky to pointer, you will recall, is a whole step. So I'm going for the first to the second, which is a whole step. And then I would actually finger through it. So I'm going boom, boom. And then I'd say it again, we're going from note number four plus two to note number six. And so now I'm on note number six, and then I'm gonna code switch and say note number six is a D, and therefore D is gonna be the second, second of a C major scale, and the second of any C major scale, so I'm not just limiting, I'm sorry, the second of any major scale, not just the C major, is going to have a chord construction of a minor chord construction you could actually build a minor chord right now we'll do that i'll do that later but i'm not i don't want to get too much into the fingering of explaining that right now the second will have a minor chord construction i'll just say that and the second of uh of a major scale will also have an interval of a two note away major second so major second represents the second of the scale Two note away are the absolute notes away. You can also see that here, two note away, capital M means major second. And the major second sounds like this. So we can then play it and try to get that sound of a major second in our head. So I'm gonna go to the next worksheet over. So now we're gonna go from the second to the third. So now this worksheet is showing the E up here. So the, we're looking at the previous colored one is where we left off going to this one and this c and c represents our bookends our starting and ending points so i was on basically this d here i was on this d here and so i'm now i'm going from the second the second here to the third the second to the third so we're going from the second to the third and the going from the second to the third is a whole step and I'm gonna go from note, I'm using numbers notes this time, note number six to note number eight. Note number six plus two to note number eight because it's a whole step. And note number eight is an E, code switching from the, from the number to the letter. And therefore E is the third, this is the third position relative to the first, the third position of the C major scale. And I know that the third of a C major scale has a minor chord construction because of this lower case here. And I know that the third of a C major scale has an interval of a, this four represents four notes away. Capital M means major third. And I can see it's four notes away because it's two plus two. We did two steps plus two steps. And that's gonna be four steps away. Now note that this two steps, you might say that's a whole step. You call it, you could also call it two half steps. You could also call it a major second, right? If you wanted to. But when we go from note to note, notice we don't usually say uh, it's a major second or a, we say it's a half step or a whole step. A half step would be a minor second, right? But then when we compare it to the, to the, to the first note, the second is usually either gonna be a major second or a minor second, right? Okay, and so, and so there we have that one and so the and then i can say okay the the sound of a major third is going to sound like this and that's the interval that i can try to get in my head okay so then i'll go to the next one so now we're going to go from the third to the fourth so third to the fourth so i was on this e that's the last green one i'm going to the f right so now i'm going from the third to the fourth and the third uh uh from the third to the fourth is a half step in this case going from note number eight which is an e up a half step to note number nine and note number nine is an f and therefore f is going to be the fourth of a c major scale and i know that an f has a major chord construction because i see its capital here and i know that the the uh fourth 
or the fourth has, I'm sorry, the fourth has a major chord construction because it's not just the F, it's the fourth of any major chord. And the fourth has a, an interval of a five note away perfect fourth, which I can see here and I can see here. And if I was to basically count these up, two plus two plus two is the steps we have taken in half steps, which adds up to five. So it's a five note away it, it, because that's the full distance and it's a perfect fourth. The fourth represents the relative position to the scale that we are in, and it would sound like this. Okay, so then we're gonna go from the fourth to the fifth. So now we're going from the fourth to the fifth, fourth to the fifth, so fourth to the fifth. So I was on this F, and now I'm going from pinky to pointer. Pinky to pointer, so we're going from the fourth up a whole step to the fifth. The fourth was a nine plus two gets me to 11. Note number 11 is a G and therefore G is going to be the fifth of my C major scale. And I know that the fifth of any major scale has a major chord construction. And I know that the fifth of any major scale has an interval compared to the first of a seven note away which we call a perfect fifth. So it's a seven note away, perfect fifth. I can see it here, I can see it there, and then I can try to get that in my ear. Okay, so then we're gonna go from there to the next one. Let me say we're going to the, the sixth now. So now we're, we're going from the fifth to the sixth, fifth to the sixth. So we're gonna go say I was on this G, now I'm going to that A. We can see it's a whole step. Right, so I'm going to go from the fifth to the sixth. The fifth was an 11 plus two, 12, and then one, because it goes around the horn, or 13 minus 12, which is one. Note number one is an A, and therefore A is the sixth of a C major scale. And I know that any sixth of a major scale, any sixth of a major scale has a minor chord construction and any sixth of a major scale has an interval of a nine note away, which we call a major sixth, which I can see here, nine note away, major sixth. And then I could try to get that in my ear and say, okay, it's a nine. Sounds like that. Okay. And then I'm gonna go from the sixth to the seventh. So now I was on this A, now I'm going to go to this B. Notice that this is going from ring finger now to pointer, which is a whole step because I'm on this kink in the tuning where I don't have it from pinky to pointer. So I'm, I'm still going from uh, uh, the A to, to here, which is going to be a whole step to the B, which is going to be a whole step, but it's going from ring finger. So now I'm going from the six to uh, the seventh, six to the seventh, which is a whole step going from note number one to note number three. Note number three, code switch, is a B, and note number, uh, and therefore B is gonna be the seventh of a C major scale, and any seventh of a major scale has a diminished chord construction given by that little dot, and any seventh of a major scale has an interval of 11 notes away, which we can call a major seven. So it's 11 note away, major seven, you can see here, and you can see here in this position comparing it to the first, and it sounds like this. So then I can go, okay, so let's get that in my ear, and then I'm gonna go, okay, so now we're going back finally home. We're going from the seventh to what we can call the eighth, or back to the first. It starts over, you can call it eight. Sometimes that's useful to do. So now we're gonna say, all right, I'm gonna go from the seventh to the eight or the one. That's a half step. Going from the seventh to, to the uh, eighth or one is a, is a half step. I'm going from note number, uh, note number three to note number four. Note number four is a C, and therefore C is the 12 note away octave of the C major scale. Oops, that's not right. <laughs> Sorry about that. The 12 note away octave, I'm kind of, uh, I think I'm missing something here. Just paste that there. So, so there, there's the 12 note away octave, and of course the C being the one, 
has a major chord construction, and we can call the interval a 12 note away octave or a, a, a perfect first, basically, uh, as well. And so, and that then sounds like this. Okay, so then we're gonna go, we could keep going, so I could keep on going up to here and then back down again. So I'm gonna go, okay, so now I'm going from this one again, I'm gonna call it a one now instead of an eight, to the two. One to the two is a whole step. Going from note number, uh, I'm gonna say note, going from the first to the second is a whole step. Going from note number four plus two to note number six. Note, no, note number six is a D and therefore D is the second of a C major scale. Any second of a major scale has a minor chord construction. Any second of a major scale has an interval of a two note away, which we call a major second, which sounds like this. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to the next one and go, okay. And notice I'm comparing to this C. You can also compare to this C up top although the octaves are different now, right? So I'm gonna say, I'm comparing it to the next relative C that's kind of within the same octave kind of position. All right, so then I'm gonna to go to the next one and we're gonna say, now we're gonna go from the second to the third, second to the third. So we were on this D, now we're going to the E, which if I play this with my pinky, which would be pinky to pointer, which is a whole step. So we're going from note number six up to six, seven, eight to note eight. Note number eight uh, is an E, and therefore E is gonna be the third of the C major scale. Any third of a major scale has a minor chord construction. Any third of a major scale has a interval of a four note away uh, major third, and that sounds like this. And then I can go from that position. So now we're going from three to four here, three to four here. So we're gonna say we're going from three plus a half step or one to four. So we're going from note number eight plus one to note number nine. Note number nine is an F and therefore F is going to be the fourth of the C, which is right above it, the C major scale. Any fourth of a major scale has, an, uh, has a chord construction of a major chord construction. Any fourth of a major scale has an interval of five note away, which we call a perfect fourth. You can see here and here, which sounds like this. And then if I go to the next one, we're gonna say, finally, we're gonna be going from uh, the fourth to the fifth, which I think I need to move this down, from the fourth to the fifth here, fourth to the fifth here, going from uh, the fourth, which I could play this way, to the fifth is a whole step, going from note number nine plus two to 11. Note number 11 is a G and therefore G is gonna be the fifth of this C major scale. Any fifth of a major scale has a major chord construction. Any fifth of a major scale has an interval of a seven note away perfect fifth. Now, of course, we could then do the whole thing going backwards, but I don't wanna to take too much time. Let's just, I'm gonna start back on over here uh, as though we're on uh, this C just to get an idea of the worksheet. If we were gonna go from the C back, so now we're gonna say we're starting on uh, the C and we can call that the eighth. So if we say we're gonna go from the eighth uh, back to the seventh, that would be like you're on this C or the first back to the seventh. And we're gonna be moving up this way on the worksheet. In this case, you have the eighth down here. The first, it's gonna repeat. Eighth is going back down on the worksheet. So now we can say then, if I'm going from the eighth to the seventh, it's gonna be a half step going back the other way. So we're going from uh, note uh, number eight back to note number seven. Note number uh, eight is going from four down a half step down to note number three. Note number three is a B and therefore B is the seventh of the C major scale and notice I'm playing this one, the C now is gonna be higher in pitch as we go down. We can also compare it to the C up here to compare the two intervals if you, if you want to as you go back down the other way, right? So now you're looking at the inverse of the intervals. I'm playing the higher pitched one first back to the lower pitched one. So, so then I'm gonna say, okay, then the seventh, I know it has a diminished chord construction. 
The seventh has an interval of 11 of an 11 note away major seventh, and it sounds like this. Now I can also compare that again to the to the C that was up top here to this C. to get the the similarities between the octaves when you're playing when you're playing these and then i'm going to say okay i could go down if i look at the next one on the worksheet now we're going to be going uh down to the uh uh from the seventh to the sixth so now i'm going to go from the seventh to the sixth from the seventh to the sixth and you could see if i go down it's going to be a whole step uh, which is going to be this two here because I have the kink in the tuning. I was on this B and I'm going to go down to this A, which is a whole step. So I'm going to go from the seventh down to the sixth, which is a whole step because of the kink in the tuning. It's not going from pointer to pinky. It's going from pointer uh, to ring finger. I'm going from note number three down uh, two, three, two, one. Note number one is going to be an A, and therefore A is going to be the sixth of the C, which I'm grabbing down here as opposed to up top here, right? Because I'm going the other way as to the C major scale. And we know that the sixth has an interval. Uh, the sixth has a minor chord construction. The sixth of a major scale has a nine note away uh, major six interval. And I can play that interval now this way. I'm going to play the C first, which is higher in pitch. And I can also compare it to the C up top here. And so you can kind of work both of those in. Okay, so now let, let's do the same thing now in open position. So, because we're running quite long here, I'm going to say, okay... Let's go back to open position here. Here's my C in open position and just do the same thing. But now, of course, my fingering is going to be uh, different because I'm in the open position, which I can't quite get right because I'm switching up the spots here. So now we're going to say <laughs> we're going to go from the first, which is this C now, to uh, the second, which is now going to be an open position. So if I go from the first to the second it's going to be a whole step going from note number four to note number six note number six is a d and therefore d is the second of a c major scale any second of a major scale has a minor chord construction any second of a major scale has an interval of a two note away which we call a major second i could see it here or here on uh, the worksheet and it sounds like this Next one, I'm going to go from the second to the third, the second to the third. So I'm on this open D now. Going from the second to the third is a whole step. So I'm going from the second uh, to the third, which is a whole step. Going from note number six to note number eight. Note number eight is an E, and therefore E is going to be the third of the C major scale. Any third of a major scale has a minor chord construction. Any third of a major scale has an interval of a four note away major third, which you can see here and here and sounds like this. Okay, so then I'm gonna to go to the next one and say, okay, now I'm going from the third to the fourth, third to the fourth, third to the fourth. So I was on this E before. Going from the third to the fourth is a half step. Going from note number eight to note number nine. Note number nine is an F, and therefore F is the fourth of a C major scale. Any fourth of a major scale has a major chord construction. Any fourth of a major scale has an interval of a five note away perfect fourth, which sounds like this. Whoops. And then I'm going to go from the fourth to the fifth. So fourth to the fifth is going to be from this F to open position. This would be pinky to pointer, but now I'm holding my ring finger down because I don't have to hold down the nut, right? So I'm going to just see that that's a whole step going from this F to open position. This fret to open position, right, is going to be, as I go down, is going to be an, uh, a whole step, right? So I'm going to go from note number uh, note number 9 to note number 11. I'm going to go from 4th to the 5th, from note number 9 up to 9, 10, 11. 
Note number 11 is a G, and therefore G is going to be the fifth of a C major scale. Any fifth of a major scale has a, uh, has a major chord construction. Any fifth of a major scale has an interval of a seven note away perfect fifth that we can see here and we can see here, and that sounds like this. Okay, and so hopefully I think I got that right. So then we're gonna go to the next one here, going from the fifth to the sixth, fifth to the sixth. So now we're gonna go from that open G that we had, and we're gonna then go a whole step. So we're going from the fifth to the sixth. And that's going to go from note number 11 up to 12 and then around the horn to 1 to 1. Note number 1 is an A and therefore A is the sixth of a C major scale. Any sixth of a major scale has a minor chord construction. Any sixth of a major scale has a nine note away major sixth interval, which sounds like this. And then we're going to go from the sixth to the seventh, from the sixth to the seventh. So now I was on this A, and we're gonna go into the open position. Now this has the kink in the tunery. It used to be, right, that we would be going from pinky to pointer, but now this would have been my ring finger to pointer, which would be a whole step because of the kink in the tuning, but now I'm holding it down with my middle finger because, because of the shift up in the tuning. So now we're going from basically middle finger to open position just between these two strings is that whole step. Here's the A to the B, going A to the B down this way. So now we're going from the the six to the seven, which is a whole step, going from note number one up to one, two, three, to note number three. Note number three is a B, and therefore B is going to be the seventh of the C major scale and any seventh has a diminished chords construction. Any seventh of a major uh, scale has a interval of an 11 note away major seven, which you can see here and you can see here and sounds like, uh, like this. So then we can keep going up. And so now we're gonna go back finally to uh, home. So now we're gonna go from the seventh to the eighth or back to the first, seven to the eighth or back around the horn to the first. And so we're gonna go, we were on the open string of a B, which we called seven, hold half step home to eight or one. So we're gonna go from note number three plus one half step to get to four. Note number four is a C and therefore C is the 12 note away octave of a C major scale. All right, and then so, so now we could say that the first or eighth has a major chord construction, has an interval of, you can call it a 12 note away octave or a perfect first, which sounds like this. And then we can go to the next one and say, keep going up. So now we're repeating the process, but starting at this C. So now I'm going to go from the first to the second is a whole step going from note number four to note number six. Note number six is a D, and therefore D is the second of a C major scale. Any second of a major scale has a minor chord construction. Any second of a major scale has an interval of a two note away major second. I can see here and here and sounds like this, which you can also compare to this one, the C, but it's different by the octave, right? So it should have a similar quality but different by the octave. So then I'm gonna go from the uh, second to uh, the, the third. So going from the uh, second of a major scale to the third of a major scale is gonna be a whole step going from note number six to note number six, seven, eight. Note number eight is an E and therefore E is gonna be the third of a C major scale. Any third of a major scale has a minor chord construction. Any third of a major scale has an interval of a four note away major third. You can see here and here and sounds like this. And then we're gonna go from there to the next one to the fourth. Uh, so hold on, something's wrong with my worksheet. We're gonna bring this back here to do it, to do it. And then fourth, fourth. So now we're going to the, to the fourth which is going from note, we're going from, what was I on, third to the fourth, 
which is a half step going from note number eight to note number nine. Note number nine is an F, and therefore F is going to be uh, the fourth of the C major scale. Any fourth of a major scale has a major chord construction. Any fourth of a major scale has an interval of a five note away perfect fourth. You can see here and here and sounds like this. And then we're going to finally go from the, see if this worksheet's right. We're going to go from the fourth to the fifth. We're going to go from the uh, uh, fourth to the fifth, which is going to be a whole step going from note number nine plus two to note number 11. Note number 11 is a G, and therefore G is going to be the fifth of a C major scale. Any fifth of a major scale has a major chord construction. Any fifth of a major scale has an interval of a seven note away perfect fifth, which you can see here and here, and sounds like this. And then again, you would like to, it'd be good to kind of play this backwards. So if I was going, going back the other way from the seventh, you know, back to uh, the 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 first for example or let's go here was I going here so now we're going from I think that'll work we're going from the eighth uh, to the seventh now so I'm looking at this one here so now we're going backwards from this is going to be what I would call the eighth back to the seventh you can call it the first but I think sometimes it's easier to say I'm going to go from the eighth back down to the seventh. So it's here to here if you're going around the horn or here back down uh, to the seventh. So I'm trying to see which worksheet would be the best to look at because this A isn't quite right when I go the other way, but this works well when I'm going, you know, back this way. So I may, maybe it's best to use this worksheet going back and then I can say, okay, so now I'm going to say this is going to be the first or eighth of the C major, whoops, right here, of the C major scale. I'm going back from the, from the eighth to the seventh, which is a half step, going from note number four down one to note number three. Note number three is a B, and therefore B is the seventh of a C major scale. Any seventh of a major scale has a diminished chord construction. Any seventh of a major scale has an interval of an 11 note away major seventh. So by going backwards, you'll be able to play with the octaves, the two intervals, and you'll be able to start to see in the inverse if I was to play, you know, the, the, the B and then the C versus the C and then the B, right? The inverses of uh, the intervals. Uh, so then again, you can, of course, walk, keep on walking this back. So now I'm going back uh, to the six. So I was on this B. Now I'm going down uh, to the A. So I was on open here and we're going to go down two notes to go from the seventh to the sixth the seventh to the sixth going down from note number three to one to note number one which is an a and therefore a is going to be the sixth of a c uh, major scale any sixth of a major scale has a minor chord construction any sixth of a major scale has an interval of a nine note away major six you can see here you can see here when i compare these two notes i want to play the c first which is higher in pitch so i'm trying to compare it that way the interval would be the inverse interval would be playing it from the a to the c right if i play from the a to the c the inverse difference, right? But now I'm playing from bottom to up, C to A, and then I can also compare it to this C over here, uh, from this C to A. And you can try to start getting your ear training down, which I'm, I'm practicing on too. I, again, I'm, a, I'm an accountant, right? I don't do this all, all the time. This is the practice I do to try to get, to try to get some of these concepts in. And if you can fine-tune these down you can actually practice this stuff once you get good at it pretty quickly without too much time like whenever you can find time <laughs> to, to, to do it